Sorry, guys, I had to. But we'll wait for five minutes, I think, and then we'll give up at uh, 12.35. Okay. okay. Well, we, we are recording the meeting. If anyone has a problem with that, please let us know. Thanks. I got many emails, not many, many, but a few that they want to join the meeting and they are still not here, so. Mm -hmm. well, we'll gather them up as we go. As I say, we'll get started at 12.35, just so we can get yeah. into the program. But um, but we'll be, I'm, I'm, I'm sure people will be joining us as we go and we'll certainly uh, have enough people, even with those online now, to have what I anticipate will be a great conversation after the presentations by our three panelists. So. Um, I'm not worried about a good conversation for an hour. Yeah, there is some. Uh... Yeah, but you have a today many events, right? Online events. Um, today, I'm not. I'm not sure. I was looking at the schedule earlier. There's several things. Yes, there's um. There, we have a children's event that's that's kind of simultaneous to this event, and then we have a couple of other things I think lining up, and then I think that's more or less it for us. Um, and then we have a, a kind of an award ceremony for um, another little thing that's kind of part of this programming um, in a couple of days, and then that's that's it for this programming. Oh. The weekend was pretty packed though. There yeah. were a lot of things. Yeah. Why are too quiet? <laughs> oh, thoughtful, thoughtful. Rest, yeah. <laughs> reading, <laughs> reading yeah. things, important things. Meditating. Yeah. <laughs> that too, sure. Deep, deep breathing <laughs> exercises, sort of pulling the level of stress down or whatever. Whatever you need before your performance piece. <laughs> oh, I need a glass of water. That's a good one. Well, you've got you've got th two minutes to do that, Nita. So. Oh, it's just there. <laughs> yeah, here comes some folks. Yeah. So for those who are just joining us, we made the decision to wait until twelve thirty-five to get started. So uh, we'll be getting going in about two minutes' time. But we wanted to make sure we gave a couple more people a chance to join us before we launch. Yeah, I'm back. Faster. Excellent. Back on track. Here we go. Hmm. So according to my clock, we are basically there. So let me begin by welcoming everybody to this Montreal City Mission Blue Met panel discussion called Listen to My Story. My name's Royal Orr. I'm a volunteer member of the Board of Governors, Board of Directors at the Montreal City Mission. Um, and really pleased to be able to uh, animate this session or moderate this session really depends on you and your level of energy, whether I have to animate you or moderate you in terms of the conversation. I'm sure it's more likely to be moderator than animator. Anyway, uh, this is, I can't, I don't know exactly how many years we've been doing this now, but it's certainly a great partnership we've had Wait, with you, Matt, doesn't work. again, and, uh, and looking forward to the conversations today. As I say, the theme of this is my story. 
And what we wanted to hear was some stories about coming to Canada, integrating in Canada, becoming the kind of societies that we need. Um, Arwa, maybe we need to sort of mute people's microphones just to be sure we don't have unintended interruptions here. Um, and obviously when we get into the conversation later on with our panelists, we'll be opening up some mics so that people can have that conversation at that point. But for now, I think we probably better mute our mics. Um, so uh, as I say, we have a panel of three. Uh, uh, each of them is gonna be presenting for six or seven minutes, just a bit of their perspective on the challenges and, uh, and, and pleasures of, uh, of being part of a new society and integrating in that society. Uh, I'll introduce them in a moment. But after their presentations, we will be opening up the mics and, uh, and turning to you for, for, uh, for, for your reactions and maybe even some, some more storytelling from you as well. So without further ado, unless there are any questions, what I'd like to do is uh, to turn to David Bradford, who is with us from Blue Mat. And before I introduce our three panelists, maybe I can just ask David, who is Associate Coordinator, Programming and Communications with the Blue Mat, just to say a couple of words. David. Thanks, Royal. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm a poet and an editor based here in Montreal. Um, but uh, I just wanted to take a, a moment off the top to say that um, you know, like everyone else who's coming here from Montreal, I'm based in Montreal, but also Chochake, which is an unceded territory of the Ganyan Gahaka Nation. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping to encounter you all today with some of, I guess, the critical thinking that I think is required um, when we come together as settlers. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, more specifically to today's events, um, I'm here on behalf of as mentioned, um, Blue Metropolis and the Blue Metropolis International Literary Festival. Um, and I think if I'm recalling correctly from my conversations with Anwar, um, this is our fourth year of this partnership, which we've been pretty thrilled about, especially as we've moved um, as a festival and as a kind of cultural producer um, in the direction of facing some of the challenges in, in a different kind of way and on um, various collaborators' own terms um, around some of the, the concerns that will be discussed today. So very excited to be here. Um, and I'm reminded, I mean, this is part of our Hope to Remember Days programming, which in many ways is involved in um, concerns related to racism, can learn concerns related to the challenges and accomplishments um, evolving kind of concerns of um, various marginalized communities. Um, and some of that stuff is things, events that we were going to program earlier for the spring, but that had to be postponed because of the pandemic. And some of them are events that we had originally started planning as a bridge to um, some of these kinds of concerns that are gonna be pretty central to our 2021 edition of the festival. Um, it's striking, especially here today, to think about the concerns that we're going to be talking about specifically with integration and um, immigrant communities and the kind of challenges, contributions, um, accomplishments that are part and parcel with various kinds of macro level immigrant experiences in Canada, but also on a, a more kind of fleshed out personal level. Um, I'm struck by the fact that when I was talking to Anwar and we were kind of talking up this kind of evolving theme for this event, which is a little different than what we had planned originally in the spring, um, I started thinking about my own family's um, immigrant stories, um, specifically on the black side of my family with um, my great grandmother immigrating from Jamaica to the United States. And then eventually from the United States, um, my father leaving Philadelphia and coming to Montreal and the ways in which, even though he came from a similarly Western Anglo um, society, um, he faced new forms of discrimination. He faced um, a different kind of tenor of racism and systemic racism in Quebec, um, and faced, of course, some language-based discrimination. Um, challenges also coupled with kind of the emergent joys of learning to, to live in a new place that he faced um, head on 
and was able to overcome and was able to, to make a life for himself here for 20 years. So as much as I, I'm thrilled to be here on behalf of the festival and of this kind of ongoing um, desire to be involved in these events that we don't necessarily decide the, decide the entire tenor of, um, I'm also excited to be here for personal reasons. And um, I'm looking forward to what today's panelists have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Um, the storytelling has already started. That's great. <laughs> really appreciate that. Just to let everybody know, David has already alerted us that he is going to have to leave us perhaps partway through the session. He's got a very busy schedule today. So David, it's great to have you with us for however long you can stay with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, so let me introduce right off the top the three people we'll be hearing from in succession. Uh, as I say, we'll listen to each of them talk a little bit about some of these challenges for six or seven minutes or so. And then after those presentations, we'll be coming to you for some conversation and exchange with them. Uh, joining us today on our panel, Nida Samaha. She's a graphic designer, lives in Montreal since 19, 1998. She has a BA in fine arts from Jordan and a professional education at the Université de Sherbrooke here in the Eastern Townships. She's been volunteering with newcomers to facilitate their integration process for a number of years and has had a lot of hands-on experience with that. Next, Ahab Lutayef. He is a uh, IT manager, a poet, a community activist of Egyptian origin, an engineer by training. Ahab has been working at McGill University as an IT manager since 1999. He currently serves on the Board of Governors of McGill University. He's on our board at the Montreal City Mission and also on the board of the Quebec Writers Federation. That's because he is a poet and a writer, published extensively. Just a couple of examples of bilingual poetry a, a collection called To Love of a Palestinian Woman, uh, published in 2010, and as well has had a play produced by CBC Radio called Crossing Gibraltar, that was in 2006. Uh, so great to have Ahab with us here today. And then Anwar al -Juj. Um, Anwar is a social activist and community organizer. He has a law degree from a university in Italy, worked as a criminal and human rights lawyer for 13 years in Israel. He's got a master's degree from the McGill School of Social Work, a co-founder of the Hagar Bilingual School in the Negev. And I guess from our perspective, uh, we have had the great pleasure of working with him since 2015. Uh, as the, as the director of our Man Ensemble program at the Montreal City Mission. So a particularly warm welcome to our three panelists. And uh, Nida, would you mind leading off with the storytelling of, that we're looking forward to today? Of course. Uh, bonjour, hi, this is how we greet here in Montreal. I would also add Guten Tag and uh, Ni Hao for my Chinese students. So. Uh, the more the merrier uh, living in Montreal, it's a blessing for me. It's, a, it's a, I had a very positive uh, um, life here and I would like to share some of my story or positive stories that I lived uh, through the years in Montreal. I will start by saying I'm a graphic designer uh, working at English School Board now. I'm a teacher. Also, I have two kids here. Um, I came from a big family. Originally, I'm Palestinian, uh, born and raised in Jordan, uh, living in Canada for the last 23 years. Uh, wow, it sounds a lot. Uh, the, the initial plan was to come for two years, and we fell in love with Montreal, and we stayed uh, as long as it takes until now. So uh, I would start by saying uh, we came here as uh, official, on an official visa. The, I was privileged enough to come not as an immigrant, but as uh, a wife of expat. And we started our life uh, not from scratch, but I had to go through some challenges, of course. Uh, I lived before in Austria. And uh, the first challenge for me was to learn the language. So I went to university, I learned uh, German and I speak German too. Then we moved to Montreal and then I had to move to another language, which is French. I love the language. I wanted to have an, uh, a window to know the culture. It's the first thing to do is the challenge to, lo to know the people. It's through the connection, to through communication. So I learned uh, French and then uh, had my two kids. 
uh, then the challenge to find the job wasn't easy. So I went uh, first through um, volunteering. I found that volunteering, it's uh, a good step to know the people, to go to the community center, uh, to, uh, to organize events. I worked with many uh, non-for-profit organizations, uh, the, um, the uh, cultural house uh, in Montreal, the uh, MCM, Women Weaving the Dreams, um, also Palestinian Canadian Foundation. Uh, we did a lot of events uh, with the community also. And then I decided to um, found my own organization. I found that Montreal deserves to have extra uh, organization where they have a lot uh, to help a part of the uh, uh, society that is a little bit uh, underrepresented, uh, which is the uh, international community, uh, the expats where I, my, my husband works. So I founded a Montreal LESA, Montreal Local Expatriate Spouse Association. And we start to help new expats to integrate in Montreal, to find uh, jobs, to find schools for their kids, uh, to find a nice uh, welcoming uh, atmosphere, uh, to feel, you know, to uh, cut the uh, um, long uh, integration and the hard time uh, to find stuff. So I started with this with uh, a very nice group of uh, expats from all over the world. It, it opened my eyes to different cultures, to different uh, 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 way of thinking. Uh, people from uh, South America, from the Middle East, from Asia, from China. And it was a really very uh, rich, for, uh, rich experiment for me. Um, now the, uh, the organization is still on. Uh, I had to move to work. Uh, I started working at the English School Board uh, five years ago. I teach international students also. Most of my students are Chinese. So I learned few words to say in Chinese. I love that because it, it break the ice. Uh, so the minute they come to my class, I would say ni hao ma, and they will all look at me. Wow, she knows our language. I love that. This is, it always starts where you have to communicate with the newcomers to let them feel at home. So uh, for me, this was uh, a way of starting a new class or a new conversation with a group of people. One of my challenges was uh, staying in the, the weather that we couldn't do anything about. <laughs> so we had to uh, you know, live, uh, use all the tools uh, to uh, live through the winter. The first year I came to Montreal, I had the ice storm that wasn't very good experience. <laughs> so from now, from that part in time until now, it's much easier. So we, we saw the worst first day, first winter, and then it come, became easier for me to integrate in this weather. Uh, we love the people, the, uh, I love the, uh, uh, the welcoming aspect of Montreal uh, that uh, we couldn't see anywhere else in Canada or anywhere else in the world. We traveled a lot. We also, me and my husband, my two kids, we were on a, a car trip. We crossed Canada from east to west for uh, seven days uh, from Halifax to Vancouver. We had the, uh, we were very lucky to see all the different uh, provinces and uh, dealing with different people, uh, finding how Canada is stretched all over, richness of Canada, beautiful. So uh, this gives me, you know, like I, I felt Canada uh, home from home. Uh, I can live here, uh, you know, practice my uh, culture, my religion uh, with an ease. Uh, I felt this society is created for all. Uh, you, everybody has to put his own uh, input and still be himself. Uh, it encourages people to work, to study. Uh, I never had, you know, like a really bad experience. Let's say, you know, even through the uh, last 20 years, uh, we were privileged to, uh, to start on a well-off uh, basis. So we couldn't, I didn't see the, uh, uh, the challenges as the others, but I wanted to help. This was give me, you know, a lot of uh, 
positive uh, initiative that I would like to share with people, helping others, was one way to, uh, uh, to integrate in Montreal, one way to have this society uh, be my family and my friends. I used to make gatherings with different uh, uh, cultures. I had so many friends from different parts of the world and it, it will enrich, uh, it enriches my life and also give me this opportunity which I couldn't find anywhere else around the world. Um, is it, can I say more? Well, yeah, of course, but, but we, are, we are at seven minutes, but, but please, if you've got some more to recount. Okay, I would say, um, I would, I'd like to say one thing about Montreal. Uh, Montreal is a beautiful city, unique, which uh, brings everybody together. You, you fell in love with the city if you come in summertime, of course, but mm -hmm. never mind the construction. But uh, I always say you have to do the extra step. You have to be extrovert. You have to uh, reach to the people. Nobody will come to you at home and tell you, okay, come and work with us. Once you are on the uh, first step, you will live your life easily and happy in Montreal. And that's why for this, I'm grateful. And I enjoy every day here uh, with light, with sun or with the snow. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Neda. And obviously, we'll all have a chance to speak with Neda after the presentations. But let's listen to the next story. Ahab, would you please uh, take us, take us, take us where you intend to take us? I'm not sure where I intend to take you, but uh, uh, first, let me say that uh, I I really enjoy your chairing uh, uh, <laughs> because Royal, you. You do it in a very pleasant way. I know when I chair, I'm much more strict than you are, and I enjoy seeing the other, the other side of the of the way of, of efficient sharing. Uh, I will start by also uh, acknowledging, um, uh, as David did, that uh, we are here on uh, on indigenous land. Although we are virtual, but we are ver coming to you virtually from indigenous land, and that uh, we have to. To, um, really commit in a meaningful way, not just as a slogan, to protect this land and to make the best out of it uh, and, and to deliver it to the following generations better than we received it, whether we are original uh, settlers or we came in uh, to a system that's already established, we all have the responsibility. Um, I thought uh, I, I thought a lot about how to make my, uh, my introductory remarks and uh, I really, uh, said that I, I would really like more to hear from the, 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 the friends uh, who are around the, the, this virtual table uh, and then comment on it. So I said, I will cap my introductory remarks to something that is very close to my heart, to a poem. Uh, but a poem that, that says a lot. This poem was written uh, on, uh, in the early 2000s, I think 2003. Uh, and it was, so at that time I had been in Montreal for about uh, 14 years and then I am now another 17 years here. So it's more or less halfway of my journey uh, in, in Canada. Um, over those years, I had witnessed things that had shocked me. Some of them were uh, more personal and some of them were what we can call world events. Um, like, uh, for example, the incident of a, uh, a native man called uh, Neil Stonechild, who uh, the, the, the police in, um, in what city was it? I, I don't remember, but somewhere out west, uh, I think it was in Saskatoon, uh, where the police had arrested him and then they, um, they, they, they didn't have anything against him. So instead of dropping him down in the city, they dropped him out in the middle of nowhere and he froze to death. Um, at the same time, there was this Canadian uh, Syrian uh, young man who was from here, from Montreal. I actually knew him personally, who was on his way back to Canada from Tunisia, was caught by the Americans on his stopover to uh, to to um, uh, to Montreal uh, in in New York, and and they deported him to Syria, where he spent a year and a half in the Syrian jails till the Canadian government managed to, to bring him back. So these kind of events uh, are, in my opinion, what create um, 
in addition to our personal experience, what create our, our journey really. And I've always found that there are so many people who do the journey physically, and it's, it's very unfortunate, but I believe it is the majority who do the journey physically, but spirit in, in their spirit and in their mind, they don't move from where they originally were. And this is, uh, I mean, it's not a matter of criticizing this because I think it's human nature, but it's a matter of being sad about it because you lose so much when you do that. When you come and live with your body in a different world, but you don't really feel that you're a part of it. In my way, I always wanted to do something here, whether I could or not was another story and I also wanted to bring some sort of fusion without without assimilation but fusion of cultures of ideas and I believe that I continue to believe after all these years that the world can only evolve through the amalgamation and exchange of ideas and cultures if those who stay closed prevent us from doing this, prevent us from evolving basically. And uh, if we look at the world history, we realize that this is really how the world did evolve. Um, this civilization, if we want to call it that, took from the previous one and, 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 and bettered the, 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 the philosophy, the ideas, the thoughts, the rights, and gave it to the following and so on. And that's how the world evolved. And I hope we can, we can do this um, through the, 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 our existence as individuals and as societies and communities in today's world. Okay, now to the poem. The poem is called Between. Between a Yankee killing, falling in Iraq and freedom fighters who would die so a world can live. A native boy sentenced by cops to freeze to death. An Arab man deported to a lawless land. Between the blisters in your face, hot desert sand, and angels boys and girls would make on a snowbank. Between the death, between the death in Deir Yassin in 48, and New York City, on that day, towers collapsed between my dreams in this metropolis of the north and the city of minarets, my land of birth. I am a bridge. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jehab. Between. So, um, Let's turn now to my friend Anwar, um, Anwar al -Juj. And uh, Anwar, hard, hard act to follow, but um, what, what have you for us today? Oh, hi, good morning, sabah al khair, the jamia. Wow, it's a, it's a, I think it's a special day, special event for me, because maybe this is the first time that I, I tell my person, personal story as, as a human being, not as an activist. activist. Um, you know, with the, with the real emotions, with the real, uh, my experience. So I would like to do it in, in, within three stages, three steps where I grow, grew up in an unrecognized village in the Beersheba and the Negev area without the basic services that we know, without real road without real house. Royal, you visited us in 1998. And I remember when you, you know, we, we hosted him in the Diwan, in the Sheikh, where the men used to sit. And he asked me, I want to use the bathroom. I looked, what? You know, after being in Italy for a few years and in Montreal for a few years and coming back, I, said, I want to use the bathroom. I said, what? Just go there behind the deer. You remember that, Royal? And do it there. Yeah, well, but 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 in my own defense, I didn't want to go and do that unless I had permission. To yeah. so. <laughs> I think it's. It, I'm saying that to to demonstrate for you the reality where I grow up as a kid, you know, in unrecognized villages, village in the Negev, 
and around me there's a Jewish, you know, uh, villages and the cities with all the services. So I, I grew up with this feeling that I'm not accepted. I'm the other, I'm even rejected. I remember when I, I, I was 19, even less 19, I went to study in Italy and was winter, was December, the end of December, 1992 was the huge, the most difficult winter ever in the Negev. And because we didn't have road, we still didn't have road. I mean, cars stuck there in the mud. So I left home two days before, just in case our car doesn't stuck in the mud, I will lose the, the, the flight. And this transition from the, um, a village, so from a tent to Rome, to Perugia, it's a huge transition for me. But I, 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 there I start to feel really that I'm not rejected anymore. Maybe I'm neutral, I'm a student, I came here to gain uh, education, but I'm not rejected. I can go in the street without anyone looking at me What's the Bedouin is doing here in Beersheba or in other Israeli uh, city? Uh, I passed there six years, fantastic six years. And then I came back, you know, with a little bit, okay, I went there in Italy for six years. So I had really the, the good uh, life and the acceptance. I came back and I started to work as a lawyer. And then I, I, I really, I, I was shocked how also the racism in the system. Even at the court, when I used to go as a lawyer to defend my client, a criminal client, I had to pass through, you know, uh, 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 many glasses. First of all, I have to come and face his, the Bedouin lawyer, the Arab, the Palestinian lawyer come. So you see already the crown, the prosecutor, the judge against you. This is, this is the start. And then you have to make more than any Jewish lawyer, 20, 30% of work. So the feeling it's, um, I'm rejected. I don't feel a uh, part of the system. I'm not included. And you work with the feeling of always fighting, fighting, but not feeling that you are part of, of, the, of the system. So because we have a twins, so we start to think, okay, this is the reality. My, I see the demolitions in the uh, Bedouin houses every day. I cannot do anything. On the other hand, I see even in the street when you walk. I remember when one, uh, three, three years ago, one of my best friends came to visit here. And he said, look, Anwar, I feel my, my you know, my, my uh, uh, nerves. He relaxed. He's a lawyer too. And when I walk in Beersheba, I, I, like that, it's strength, you know, it's, it's tension. Here I feel relaxed, nobody look at me, nobody, you know, facing me, nobody would say something. I'm not saying here it's perfect. I'm coming to say other things, but I think mm -hmm. it's, you know, the, the, the change of the, the position, the place where you feel, I would say, you know, from rejected to neutral uh, in Italy, coming here to, to Canada after working many years in, in Beersheba and with the Palestinian in the, in the Chis, uh, um, West Bank and the South Hebron, we established the bilingual school, which is half of the kids, because in Israel, the education, it's really separated. No Jewish Israeli would, would work with Palestinian and they study the language. It's everyone has his own education system. So we created the bilingual, established the bilingual uh, Hajar school in Beersheba where half of the kids, half of the teachers, uh, Arab and Jews, and they study both languages. It was 2007, now we have more, around 300 kids studying at the school. So doing all those and coming here in Montreal, we said actually to, to come here just for three, four years because my, my wife do, did her PhD and said, well, we'll finish and we'll go back to the Negev and start, you know, fight and I was crazy. And from the airport, I have to say, we heard first time, welcome. Because in Israel said, okay, go there. We're gonna look for your, your baggage. Here, first time we said, welcome. Do I have time, Royal? Yes. So it's, it's, it's 
um, 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 he's an officer, but means a lot for someone that I, I didn't felt included part of the society, never. Even though I, I born there, my parents born there, my grand grandparents born there, this is my land, but outside it's, it's different. And, and here you see, you start, okay, welcome, but you, you have many challenges. I had uh, uh, an office there. I was my boss, I was my own boss. I worked as a lawyer and here, okay, what I'm gonna do? So even I, I start to work as a dishwasher for one year, but even there, I felt welcome. I felt part of the stuff in the, in the kitchen. I got the opportunity and the pleasure to be part of the ICANN program. And I graduated in, at McGill and Paula, we cannot see her, but I have to say she's one of the person amazed me or oh, the beautiful surprise, the beautiful things that happened to me. To, to meet with her through Royal, to volunteer at Montreal City Mission. And I came to the church, I'm a Muslim. I, well, I came from the conflict zone, uh, well, you know, Jews, um, uh, all these stereotypes, I, have a, I had a big bag of them with me carrying them. And then I came to St. James. First of all, I couldn't enter because I didn't know exactly was, what is the, the entrance. So I called Paula one million times, Paula, come down, the door is closed. I could, I cannot open the door. And then going through the stairs, it's a little bit dark, it's an old building, dark. I was asking myself, what I'm doing here? You know, I'm, I'm, I left the conflict. I wanna have fun, you know, it's Canada. So I wanna leave everything. I wanna start new things. And what I'm doing here in the church in the dark buildings, uh, you know, here. And how she worked with me, how she said, look here, is your computer, start work, w w w sorry? Here is your laptop, here your desk, start to work. Then at the time they just, the Syrian refugee just came, start to, to, to come. And, and first time really, I sat there, I, don't, I didn't know what to do, but this feeling, wow, I'm doing, I'm working in a nice place that welcomed me, that I feel part of it. And, and this is, it's really different mindset, different situation that takes, took me a lot of time to really, okay, it's different here. I can work with all the challenges. I didn't mention challenges, but believe me, we see challenges each day, each minute, but I will continue after, Royal, Steve. <laughs> Anwar, I, I, I didn't want to interrupt the flow. Um... That was really beautiful and thank you. Thank you. Uh, we, we have had the great pleasure and privilege of connecting every so often over the years. And uh, it's always been a wonderful experience for me to, 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 to come to know your world a bit. Thank you to all three of our panelists. Now, uh, in this virtual world, I suspect most everybody has lots of experience now with Zoom. But what I'd ask you to do, if you have a comment and your video is on, Maybe just hold up your hand and I'll come to you. And if you'd rather not sort of do that or you just want me to sort of put it into the mix, you can also send me a chat because there is of course a chat function and you can chat directly with me. So if you've got a comment, but you don't necessarily want to speak it, um, you can send that to me or send me a question and I'll pose it on your behalf. Um, so uh, without further ado, I see Shara's uh, hand is up. Your mute is still on though. So if you could unmute there. Um, please go ahead. Um, first of all, it's my pleasure to join this panel. And I know um, Anwar and his wife, Amal, very well. I know Ahab, I know Tali, uh, Aviva, of course. Well, not of course, and Aviva. But I want to pick up on something that Ahab said about being a bridge. I had the privilege 12 years ago of welcoming four children from Senegal teenagers. And we have formed a unit and talking about mix of cultures. They're Muslim. I'm Jewish. They're African. I'm very Canadian, very Canadian. And the way we've, uh, the experiment, the way we've managed to mix all of this together is really quite phenomenal. Um, 
So I just want to say, yes, we all have can be bridges and you know, we have to open ourselves up. Now, this just came upon me. I mean, I was not something I planned in my life, but um, they're now um, 26 to 30. That's their age, 26 to 30, married with children, working, established their lives here, but really one foot in Africa, one foot in Canada. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's just my comment. It was a great privilege, and it continues to be a great privilege for me. Well, and I can certainly hear it in your voice. The, 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 the general experience I, pe- I think that people have, which is becoming some kind of a bridge to use your image, really enriches your life in a way you never anticipated, at least for Absolutely. most people. And again, I'm not saying that there aren't challenges and sometimes... Oh. <laughs> Not only positive experiences, but that's the case. Let's let's gather up a couple more comments before we go back to our panelists for some further reaction. Anybody else have a comment or a story to tell or something to, to share with the group? I'm not seeing any. Yes. Ola. Is it Ola? You're, you're on mute, so could you unmute? Go ahead, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, it's Ola. <laughs> and um, I'm a friend, actually. So I'm very pleased to meet everyone here. Um, and uh, this uh, experience is really enriching me. Um, I'm got, I got very emotional, actually, when I hear the poem of Ehab. And uh, you, you brought tears to my eyes, actually. And um, I'm very glad, uh, Nida, that you had very positive experience as I saw from uh, all what you have been through since you arrived here to Canada. And Anwar, I I can't even express how inspiring your stories. And uh, I have a tons of questions for you, but maybe not in this uh, (laughs) meeting. Um, My comment is is just uh, regarding my experience. uh, once I arrived here, it wasn't that positive uh, uh, as Nida, uh, unfortunately. Um, what I can say that I found um, um, every experience is very personal. When uh, I arrived here, I met with people that was really, really concerned about French language. And uh, I wasn't that good in French, like I was very excited and uh, I had the same feeling like Nida that uh, it's a new opportunity, I would like to have a new window to new culture and I'm very open minded, so let's do it, but um, uh, the, the experience was a, a bit intense, like you have to talk good French now or you are not accepted in this community and it was harsh for me at the beginning but at the same time uh, I'm uh, originally from Egypt I'm a Muslim woman and when I went to uh, Muslim girls trying to find a bit of ease I found the same concept you have to be exactly uh, Muslim like us uh, dressing like us, talking like us, uh, so we have to protect our identity, okay? So I was between the two groups and I was like, oh, yes, I'm open to change. I, 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 I wanted to, to um, have this kind of bridge that uh, Ihab was talking about, but uh, something in and something out, I wanted to to have this kind of uh, experience, but I was unfortunately facing with my first experiences here, these two uh, uh, kind of, th- of, of communities, but with the same thinking. And um, so, so can we maybe turn back to our panelists, not necessarily all three, but anyone want to comment on that point, which is, that whole issue of identity and expectations of the identities you have to, you know, take on in order to be fully integrated or accepted, and 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 how that can create some tension and some resistance. Um, Neda, Ahab, Anwar, anything to say on that? Yes, Neda. We don't have your sound. Are you mute? 
Yes, you're, you're still muted, Neda. It, it's not your microphone, you're actually muted. Yes, yes. Yes, no, there you are. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you, Ola, for your comments. I know each story, it's a special story. Uh, the way I uh, treat my, uh, my life here, it was uh, starting by positive, uh, looking at the positive side. And it was, I had a lot of challenges but uh, I took it positively. I always uh, initiate uh, things. I always try to understand the other. I always try to uh, respect their uh, culture, but I didn't want to assim assimilate. I wanted to integrate. I want to add to the, uh, what they, the society have. Uh, maybe uh, you need it, you should have gone to maybe other group, you know, there are some groups they feel that they're afraid of uh, integrate to lose their own identity so it's it, you don't lose your identity you add to it you enrich your identity the more the merrier you can you can right Sorry? right but but i think ola's point is even if that's your attitude if the people you're talking to are sort of saying to you no you've got to be like this or like this or like this whether it's language whether it's religion whether it's hijab <laughs> whatever it is what, so, yeah, so what becomes you know the the response when the people you are meeting are saying, no, in order for me to accept you, you've got to be like me. Yeah, but this is not all over the place. You know, the story is, it's one group that, it's a very specific group. You have to show that you have an identity. You know, who I am is what's inside. How can I integrate with these people without uh, put harm to them? Okay. So I have to respect them. We can we can talk to them and say, you know, I respect your uh, point of view, but I also have my own ideas. It Let's has to be communication. Yeah. Let's a comment from Ehab on that. Yes. Yeah, I, I will I will just very briefly, and I see uh, Aviva's hand is up, so I'm sure you'll give her the. the I know. <laughs> but but just very very briefly, I, I I totally resonate. I mean, and and Ola knows that we resonate together about this because most people, most groups want you in a mold. They want you to be something to fit in, whether that is a small community expatriate group or it's a whole country. If you're not like them, you are in a very difficult situation because you don't have people to connect with. And I, by the way, the first time I met with Ola, it was, I was talking to some friends, I didn't know Ola at the time, about the Buddhist meditation that I attended. And the Muslims were very shocked, like, what did you do exactly? Why did you go for a 10-day Buddhist meditation? And Ola, on the other hand, was very interested to talk to this crazy guy who went to a 10-day Buddhist meditation. So this is, this is really the difficulty. And if you, you don't have strong guts, this breaks you down very easily. Okay, quick comment from uh, from you, Anwar, and then I want to get to a view. I think it's the you know the identity and fighting the identity or who's the identity. This is it's a normal discourse, and we have to deal with that. I mean, we cannot just ask and will disappear. Never disappear. All the history everywhere it was this discourse, and people will deal with that. I think it, it depends how you use your identity to be the the. You know the mediation to be the part, uh, the bridge, as 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 you have mentioned before. But also, as you were talking about Anwar, how you are personally in a process of, in a sense, becoming someone else yourself, right? Of like expanding your own identity or widening your own identity. So you've got that conflict going on as well in terms of identity. Uh, uh, absolutely. I, uh, one one sentence I will finish. This is the mediation. This is how I see the mediation. You 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 can't transfer. You can change, you can accept, you can be in the middle. On the bridge. Aviva, if you have a comment. Yeah, I just wanted to share that um, I understand uh, when, when I think it was Ola, when she was saying that she's, you know, that she feels uncomfortable when they feel you don't speak French, you're not part of our community, but I've been living here all my life. I'm an Anglophone. And I have to tell you, it's not always comfortable for me either. Even though I'm not coming from outside, I also, I do speak French. Do I speak it phenomenally well? No, but honestly, I sometimes feel resentful. I sometimes feel angry because I try so hard to speak French that a lot of Francophones don't speak English to me. And I think together, and that's another way of, again, 
coming together from both sides that francophones, anglophones, everyone has to try. And I think I understand how the not feeling comfortable, I get it. I really do understand that. It was a good reminder, thank you, Aviva, that uh, identity politics are deeply built into Montreal and Canadian society, right? So even if you've been here forever, right. um, you know, like uh, you, there's still an identity issue that, that presents itself to you um, no, no matter when you arrived. Right. Um, other comments that people have, uh, this, is a, this is a great discussion and I'd like to keep it going. So anyone have a further comment they'd like to make in terms of the conversation we've had so far? Rich images of being in between, of being bridges, of, of uh, you know, of, of identity politics intruding on things, whether that's community or national. Other comments that people might have. Can I just have one final sentence regarding the reply that I received? You can have two. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> uh, okay, it's um, uh, mostly I uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, your comments. It just I want to say that happened ten years ago or more. So now I'm completely a different area, and um, yes, I got that uh, it's not uh, everywhere, and it it just that it was my first experience, and it got me to think about. Uh, more deep thinking, who, are, who am I? Uh, do I really have to be somebody to fit? And fitting, what does that even mean? Uh, so it got me to a deep thinking and now I'm, it's, it's completely different and even to feel comfortable with myself, with my own self. And I just one final sentence to uh, Shara. I, I hope I'm... I'm saying it in a correct way, you have a very comforting voice. Uh, I think you have to do something with that. And uh, I would like to uh, know more, maybe in other meetings, about um, how you um, welcoming Singalian, I think, students, and if I can participate in such a programs or something, yeah, we can talk about later for sure. Okay, thank you very much. I'm enjoying the talk and I'm still listening, so. Yeah. Thank you very much. And we can certainly make connections between people. Yeah. If you the fact, if you just get in touch with Anwar or anybody at the Montreal City Mission, we can, we can figure out connecting points for these things. But thank you. And yeah, I agree with you about her voice. So let's hear it again, Shara. I have to agree with Aviva. <laughs> I too am born Montreal, Anglophone, and speak French extremely well. Why? Because I was forced into it. Uh, I married a man from Senegal who didn't speak English. So I lived for 10 years in French. I didn't have a, well, I had a choice, but I didn't have a choice. And to tell you the truth, um, I have tried, I, you know, I worked in biotechnology. I went to these morning, these monthly biotech kind of networking meetings. All guys in suits. I was the only female. I was the only Anglophone. And I got to tell you, it took me forever to even have people talk to me, though I'm not, I tried my best. But in the end, all my work came from the U.S. I didn't get any work in, from, from, well, from Quebec, for sure not. So I know what Aviva feels like. Me too. Um, you're kind of a you're you're here but um we also are a bit strangers anglophones in quebec well and i think this this is an interesting conversation and maybe we could do this for our next blue Met event but but that whole issue of identity politics how it affects perceptions of things like language and culture and race because you know, just being able to speak French isn't necessarily an entry ticket into Quebec and Montreal society. I suspect a lot of people from places like Senegal or the Maghreb or Haiti would tell you that they come speaking pretty, you know, excellent French. <laughs> and all of a sudden it'll be a different barrier, right? It will no longer be language, it'll be culture, religion, whatever it is. So, oh gosh, the complexities of, of, uh, of identity politics. Um, so, uh, you know, we are coming down to the bottom of the clock here. I did want to make sure we gave a couple of minutes to each of our panelists just to sort of maybe do a, a final wrap up. But I just want to make sure we haven't kind of left anybody out here. I'm not seeing any hands up. So can we go in maybe 
in, in, in a bit more, well, the same order. So just, I, just a comment, don't we have another half hour still? Uh, my, my schedule says 12, says 1.30. It's uh, until two, the the original uh, yeah. time. You want to you want to open, open you short changes, Royal. You want to short changes? <laughs> no, I don't want to short change you. It's just the schedule I got from Anwar it says open conversation until thirteen twenty six. Um, it is now thirteen twenty five, and I wanted to make sure that everyone on the panel actually got two minutes just to kind of wrap up. So. I'm just going by the schedule that I got. So yeah. let's, let's let's sort of stick with that because that was what we I, I thought we had. Okay. Is that okay if we kind of move then back to the panel? We'll yeah. get a couple minutes, just wrap. I mean, I'm not gonna be hard, you know, nosed about 1.30 necessarily, but I, I, would, I would like to kind of keep on the schedule that, that was provided to me, if that's okay. Yeah. Nada, would you give us just a couple of minutes, your reactions to the conversation? Yes. Uh, I, actually, I would like to say uh, my experience was really positive. So, uh, but this is my personal experience, and I'd like to share it because, uh, with all what's happening now at during the COVID and before, people need to have you know light in their uh, ahead of the tunnel or see positive side. But this is really my positive stories. Uh, the other thing I would say, uh, this is like advice for people who are here uh, just be yourself uh, don't get don't be feared intimidated by others uh, go uh, you know challenge your language talk to people uh, do the extra mile uh, you know be part of uh, events and uh, that's what will give you the secure to and then navigate where to find your where you find yourself at ease i had friends who were wearing niqab my neighbors were from Saudi Arabia. They were very strict, but I was good friend with them. They didn't affect me, although they were all wearing the veil and this, and I was open mind, you know, would my look like this. But I was very good friend because I, I told them this is this is who I am. I would like to be your friend, but also this won't affect me, uh, my appearance. So they knew that I have this. I had to, you know, uh, find my way. You have to be uh, strong about this. You have to show yourself. You have to have this personality. Otherwise, you will assimilate. I don't want it to assimilate. I want to share and add to the pot. My identity, it was expanded. Before I was Palestinian, Jordan. Now I'm Kenyan, global maybe. I had so many friends from different parts of the world. And uh, living the experience uh, in Montreal, it enriches my uh, my life, my kids, uh, I all, I'm always thankful to be here. Uh, if you look at all these parts of the world, we have crisis. You think you are living in a good place, in a safe place with ups and downs. It, it's not always positive. I have a lot of challenges behind me. I came from a big family uh, of 10. So I had to uh, suffer when we had to go to the bathroom or, but looking at it uh, on a positive side, it gives me uh, I hope that Montreal is one of the best places to live. That's Thank it. you. Okay. Um, I will. Um, I will reflect on 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 a couple of of other things as well. Um, I didn't go much into my my life experience when I opened, uh, but I want to say that I didn't have a, uh, a simple experience regarding living somewhere else that started when I came to Canada as a, uh, a husband, father with two kids uh, in, in the late 80s. But actually, I had uh, other experiences. Uh, my mother was a very independent woman. So for women in the 60s, she schlepped me over, is schlepped me a Jewish word? I don't know, I, now I'm only using it. She schlepped me over to England. You're to using do, it correctly. <laughs> she, uh, to, to, to do some postdoc studies in the, in, the, in the 60s. And there 
I was uh, called in the school, uh, I was all of first grader, like six, seven years old, six years old, even less maybe. And I was called the African boy. And uh, they would, it wasn't, it wasn't England of today and it wasn't the region of England like Birmingham where there were always people uh, from different uh, cultures. It was in the, in the south of England in a city, Southampton, where there was no foreigners. There was really no foreigners. And there was no even coloreds or blacks or, or, or Chinese, not nobody. It was really around the university campus where you could see two, three people who are not typical English, British. Uh, so that experience gave me a, um, gave me, because be, I guess when, when you are in a society where they don't feel threatened by you, um, they, they might treat you different, but they treat you more with some sort of uh, interest and, and, it, it is when it is when minorities or groups become sizable within societies that society starts to want to prove itself uh, and guard its culture against the presence of, of, of such minorities. So I think that this experience in English, although they used to say, as I said, they used to call me the African boy because I was the only thing they have seen close to uh, an un-British un blonde um, that it, but it still gave me some sort of strength that I can, and, and I was very young and it came very natural that I can stand, hold my own in such a, in such an environment. And um, that was a good start. I mean, um, I had another experience when I was like uh, uh, 12 years old where we lived in Iraq. And that was another experience that was not, it was much more difficult actually, because um, there was a, a, a very love hate. And I know Salam is here who is Iraqi and maybe he wants to comment on this, but a love hate relationship towards Egyptians. It's a very strange thing. So they, I don't want to categorize it, but they probably saw Egyptians as softer, you know, not as tough as, Iraqis or something of that sort that made my experience two years in school in Iraq not not easy. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that I came to Canada with a lot of experiences about living as a uh, as a as a minority or living as as the stranger uh, that that I tried to build on when I came here in a more uh, in a more conscientious way. And I learned a lot again over the last 31 years that I've been in Canada, a lot, a lot, a lot. And at the end of the day, I believe that I'm really a citizen of the world. I'm not, I'm not Egyptian, I'm not Canadian. And, and in my mind, these things do not exist. I, uh, it, you are only you. Uh, and that's what you end up being. And uh, you have to be comfortable with yourself as such and not try to please anybody to fit in. Thank you, Ray. And because he did so much to pull us together in this session today, I think it's really fitting that we, we finish with, uh, with, a, with, a, with a last comment from Anwar. I think it's uh, to addition what, uh, what Ihab saying, and I'm, I'm just bringing back in my three steps, three stages where I, where I was from the other who were you know, rejected, not included to the neutral wall in Italy, and here to the accepted with the diversity within the process of uh, uh, doing things, benefiting uh, uh, the Canadian uh, Society in general in Montreal here. So I I'm trying to practice, to implement what I have learned from my uh, uh, experience through the MCM model, SAGE, which is service, advocacy, uh, gathering, and immunia by servicing, giving services to the newcomers, refugees, uh, services that we can do, whether it's just solution, Camp Cosmos, and other uh, 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 activities that we do, advocacy to with their intention, with their, you know, they decide which kind of things we want to do uh, advocacy for it. And then gathering, because um, I think it's, it's, the, the fear between a human being, between each uh, one of us here, it's, it's, it's 
making the life difficult for everybody. But if you really uh, prepare or give the platform to people to gather, to meet, to eat, to eat together, because if we eat from the same plate, uh, I will think twice what I'm going, going to do there. We're going to put in the in there. So within our intercultural, interfaith gathering, we bring from the com different communities here in Montreal, Jewish, Arab, uh, um, Muslims, Christian, First Nation, to learn about themselves, to meet themselves. And I think if we bring the leaders to meet together, this is a good example for all the other community because they will see their leaders meeting in a mosque celebrating uh, uh, Christmas or in a, uh, 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 St. James celebrating the iftar. So it's, it's unusual. People, they want those uh, events, those things to, to see the diversity, to celebrate the, the, the diversity. And with the celebrating the diversity, we have the immunia. It's a term I learned it, um, lately with the, with the uh, Montreal City Musa, uh, St. James. It's a Catholic, I think, Catholic. Um, fix me, Royal, if I'm, uh, I'm mistaken. It means to be happy, doing things while you are happy, while you are finding your you know, uh, strength, your nice things in what you are doing. I think it's, it's, it's we have daily challenges, many, many, many challenges, but always I try to see the half uh, full of the uh, cup, not the empty. And, and instead of, I would say different, to focus in the strength of the people, because even newcomers, refugees, they have many things to, to give back to the community. Thank you. And, and just uh, sorry to interrupt you, uh, Royal, the original plan was until two. We said until one thirty with a personal story. And if we will have time, we go back to our involvement here in Montreal. So they've been it's until two. Ah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so let me just see if there are any further comments from our participants here. Um, if, uh, if someone has something they'd like to share, please, that would be great. Um, but I think we've had a pretty rich conversation already. Um, I've really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I'm not gonna shut this down if we've got some other comments, but um, it, it's, it's been a rich conversation. Um, and um, I know that we're still recording. So Anwar, I, I assume this will be available for people to see again, if they'd like to take it in or they'd like to mention it to a friend. Will it be on our site or on the Blue Mat site? It's uh, both sites, we will work it. We, we will make it short, not one hour and a half, just so we'll, we will publish it. All right, so watch for that. And maybe you might wanna share that link when we eventually have a link with friends. Uh, maybe Anwar, you could sort of make sure that we get, get this out to our community of friends that's gathered here. Um, not seeing any hands up, what I'm gonna do is, is say thank you so much to Neda, to Ahab, and to Anwar for presenting. I'm sure everybody would like to do one of those online you know, applauses, whether you've got the little icon or you're just showing your hands. I uh, wanna thank as well people who contributed to the conversation. I uh, wanna thank uh, uh, Arwa for, um, uh, for being our technical support on this one. Thank you so much, Arwa. And, uh, and I think most especially to Anwar for all the work he did with the Blue Metropolis people to put this session together. Once again, it's been a great pleasure being with you. Thank you all very much. Look forward to meeting again sometime. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.